Resiliency, it's about the bounce back and being able to, to address what you know is wrong. When you lose out on a transaction, when the deal falls through, you know it's wrong to dwell and not do anything about it. You know it's wrong. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. I'm your host, AZ Araujo. I want to thank you for hopping on board. Go ahead and check in. Good morning to you, Liz. Good morning, everyone that's jumping on board. And uh, check in if you have a minute, please. And uh, today's topic is resiliency and being resilient, right? Being resilient as an entrepreneur, being resilient in your marriage and in everything you do. It requires a, a commitment, right, to bounce back. And, you know, I had a great dinner with my wife, Carla, this, this past Saturday. And I got to tell you, this was the conversations we were having were simply amazing. Like we really connected in a, in a deep way. Uh, and, and we really reinforced of what it means to be resilient and how important it is to continue to grow and to prosper and to push the envelope in everything that we do. Um, and you know, I saw that over the weekend as well with her, you know, she just started a, a new challenge. So for those of you that, that joined the DTW challenge, um, you know, many of you are not aware of what it takes to actually operate a, a, a business of that size, right? With so many clients, online clients, uh, not only here locally within the brokerage, but across the country and then trying to always improve on it right? Not just trying to go through the motions of just putting generic information out there or generic exercises, generic food plans. But I saw this person work all weekend from morning to night, uh, putting this together. And yesterday, you know, we, we probably only had a small conversation. So that Saturday night, uh, we had a deep conversation. It was like a three hour dinner, uh, usually we're those type of individuals that go in and leave right away. And, and we just sat there and we just started really just reflecting on the journey, reflecting on where we want to go. And, um, one of the things that really impacted me, you know, I, I got really, uh, it, it just hit me to the core, you know, because in marriage, sometimes we're very critical of one another, uh, especially being together for so long, you know, there's, there's some things that, uh, we, we either start growing resentment towards our spouse or things are not as smooth. We nitpick at each other, right? It, it just happens over time. And, you know, oftentimes that's a deflection of what we're failing to do, right? Where it's a deflection of where we fail to push the envelope. So it, as opposed to looking at our own behaviors and our own actions, it's easier just to go ahead and blame what the other person is not doing and how you're contributing more than the other person. And, and this is a, really a loop that many marriages um, and, you know, fall themselves, uh, fall into, and I, you know, we were one of them as well, not to say that that doesn't happen on occasion, but we really try to be mindful of, you know, how our, we're taking responsibility for our, our own role, regardless of how, uh, we may have, ha may have contributed or, or not contributed to a certain situation, but how can we take responsibility for how we can improve and, and we can show up, right. As opposed to always you know, in my case, wanting Carla to, to be, uh, acknowledge what she did wrong. Um, but this conversation uh, got into the whole aspect of resiliency and, you know, we, we had a little bit of a, of a disconnect earlier in the week where, you know, we, we had these big projects, big, big wins, by the way, big wins for us, uh, for the brokerage, um, and personally, and I think it was more of a, of an upper limit issue, right? When so many things are going well, um, maybe it was something that we wanted to find in order to sabotage that good feeling, right? Because it, it was, it was very normal for us to win, but it, it was uh, to win at this magnitude, um, to have so many things just kind of fall in line all at the same time. Um, you know, maybe put us over that edge. I, I don't know, but I think the awareness made us understand of where we need to go moving forward. And, and let me explain here. So, um, you know, sometimes, uh, as for me, and you may be the same way, um, I'm constantly just trying to think about how to continue to push the envelope. I have so many responsibilities, um, to make sure that, you know, we're moving forward in a powerful way. Um, and I have a lot of families that depend on the power and, and the actions that I take on a daily, uh, not only my own family, but others within the organization, 
uh, including employees, including, uh, you know, even even the realtors here at Asian Associates, where they expect um, me to show up a certain way. At least that's the pressure I put on myself. And you may have a different expectation altogether, but um, that's how I expect it. So there's a lot of pressure. And, and my goal is to continue to push the envelope, not to be this type of person that says you should do this, but I'm sitting back with my feet on my desk, right? That's just not the person that I am. I, I want to continue to push the envelope. So when I tell you, hey, get out of your comfort zone is because I'm doing the very same thing. If I tell you, take those risks and continue to grow and prosper is because I'm doing those same things. So there's this constant pressure. And my mind is always racing with what move on I'm going to make next. What legacy I'm going to leave behind for my, for my daughters. What conversations can I have? How can I improve? So sometimes I do space out on occasion. Right. I do space out on occasion and 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 sometimes it's it's it can seem some borderline disrespectful right? when you're right in the middle of a conversation or something's happening and and it just it just tends to happen. And this created a little bit of conflict. Right. Because uh, there were some wins that were happening. and I was already thinking about the next five steps. And sometimes I'm not aware of of those that are in that moment right? And how I can some, sometimes just shut people down or shut people off because I am again in this place. So, um, it, it created a conflict and, and Carla and I uh, later talked about it. Right. And, and I saw how my actions could have been misinterpreted a different way, but that was never my, uh, my intention. And I think that's what happens oftentimes, right? In, in relationships, it's never our intention to hurt our spouse or to hurt or embarrass the next person. And it goes vice versa. Right. It goes both ways. I, I don't think it's ever our intention. But in this particular case, I, I just wasn't all in. Right. I was caught up in my own thoughts and my own mind thinking about the next moves. And, um, you know, so one of our conversations um, that evening was where we were both at in that situation. And she, she expressed what, how, how she felt. She expressed how what actions she needed to take moving forward if it were to happen again. And she also saw my perspective. Right. And, and that was huge for me as well, because I know she she loved the fact that I was able to see her perspective. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen again. I can't promise hey, it's never going to happen again. And and again, vice versa. But one of the things that that really hit me to the core was her reminded me of the resiliency, res, resiliency that, you know, we have as 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 a as a couple but that I also have as, as a, a business owner. And I got to tell you, like to receive this feedback and, and these compliments from someone that I've been with, uh, and going on 20 years, marriage, 24 years together to impress my own spouse. I got to tell you, it's, it feels so good, right? It's like trying to uh, get that out of boy from your parents. It's still, it doesn't matter who it is. You, you st it feels good. It's very fulfilling. And to get that level of respect and also reminder, because she was witness. She was witness to all the failures. She was witness to all the hardships, the financial downfall. She was witness to all of that. And to sit in the place where I'm receiving this, it, it just filled my heart. Because resiliency is not only being able to bounce back, but it's, it's the actions you take when, it, during the failures. It's, it's the things you do after things fall apart. And I think that respect is gained. Is, is gained when you're able to showcase that regardless of what comes your way, you're able to bounce back. And that, that creates and that demands a level of respect and appreciation. But to be being able to not only have her see my point of view, but also remind me of the, of the resiliency that I had. And all of us have our own stories. And I think this is the most important part of our journeys is to reflect on those stories. But more importantly, you know, it's not to try to, try to demand this respect from your spouse or your kids, right? As, as a entitlement, but it, that has to be earned. How do you respond when things don't go your way? When, a, when a deal falls through, they see that your spouse sees that your kids see that. 
So to get this type of feedback from the one of the most consistent, let me let me go ahead and backtrack here. The most consistent person I have ever met in my entire life, and I've been around some some big players in my life. To receive those compliments, it really fueled my heart because I have not only the 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 uh, support, right, but I also have the admiration of that person, my wife. And it just really just fueled my heart because with that also comes a layer of patience. And that's what I, I, try, I strive for on a daily, to have a level of patience for, for those around me that happen to make mistakes, that happen not to be all, you know, in the moment. And that's part of our role is to be able not only to receive that, but to also do it on our end. And I got to tell you, like this morning, okay, so I'm working out five o'clock in the morning, day one of the do, do the work challenge. And I get a phone call. I usually don't get phone calls between five and six in the morning, right? Or for the most part, all the way to like eight or nine. I just don't receive phone calls. And I got one right at the gym as I'm doing a set. So I, I start to panic a little bit, right? It's like, okay, something's going down. It's kind of like that late night uh, phone call, right? It typically isn't good news. So I, I get this phone call and, uh, it's, it's my daughter. Okay. We dropped her off on Saturday evening, uh, Saturday morning. I'm sorry. Uh, she went to Costa Rica for a mission trip. So she'll be gone for an entire week. And I got to tell you, that's another thing that went very, very well. Just the pride in being able to provide that to her. Right. I never had those opportunities growing up. So it gives me a big sense of pride. So again, there was just a series of things that went very, very well. And I think that's why we had a little bit of a conflict, Carla and I. But we were able to come back full circle because we see how we can approach each situation with full responsibility. But I received this phone call. It's my daughter. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. OK, uh, like, uh, my heart's beating. I started to freak out a little bit. So I answered the phone really quick. And she says, Dad, I, I lost one of my contacts. And I know you told me to take a second pair. So this is where I have to reflect on my own patience, right? Because we had this conversation going to the airport. I said, babe, you need another pair of contacts. But she was just so, so like eager to get to the airport. She didn't want to be late. And we were running about three to four minutes late. So she's like, I don't have time. And this is just pulling out of the, of the house. So we're only taking three or four more minutes, right? By the time we make uh, the, make the U-turn and go back into the house and, and get everything necessary. So when she told me that she already knew what well, she made, she made a mistake. But for me, it's, it's understanding that I can't operate the way I've been operating my entire life because my first reaction is not to come up with the solution. It just isn't. Carla's completely opposite of me. And that's where I find appreciation from her. And I'm learning. I'm learning this stuff. Just like I'm learning from many of you uh, about how you respond to, to conflict or, or to issues that don't necessarily go your way, right? And in this case, it was my, my daughter's issue. So I, I, I immediately start thinking to myself, I'm like, I, I told you, Abigail, you know, you, you just can't leave to a foreign country and not be adequately prepared, Right. And, and this is where I wanted to to go with it. But I responded in a way I wasn't necessarily happy with. OK, because she knew she, that was the first thing she said. Dad, I forgot. I know you told me. And I, I told her, well, Abigail, there's nothing I can do about it. Right. And that was my initial response, because I was already triggered in my mind. I already had all these. I told you. You should have listened to me. How did you lose them? Like, I want this full explanation. And that's always been my issue. Like, when a problem occurs, my initial reaction is like, how did it happen? Like, I'm already dwelling in the past. When you're trying to figure out, like, a, a mistake and how it happened in and, and, and a form to blame, right? Now, if you're trying to analyze it to improve, that's one thing. But I try to get evidence to try to blame them on how they can actually, how, how she did this, right? How did you forget it? Why didn't you pay more? To, like, this is what's going on in my mind. So my reaction, even though I didn't tell her all these little details, it was like, there's nothing I can do about it. And she says, uh, okay, dad. Um, and then I said, all right, let me call you right back. And it literally, listen, resiliency is about the bounce back. Resiliency, it's about the bounce back and being able to, to address what you know is wrong. When you lose out on a transaction, when the deal falls through, you know it's wrong to dwell and not do anything about it. 
You know it's wrong. But it's the resiliency aspect and how fast we bounce back. And I, I knew how I responded wasn't the right move. That's being resilient, right? Being able to bounce back and correct the situation. So I immediately called her back within 30 seconds. And I said, all right, babe, let's, let's come up with a solution. This is what we're going to do. All right, you have your prescription. And listen, I don't even know if they require prescriptions in Costa Rica, right? I said, you have your prescription. I need you to go to your, your, the, the leader, the team leader there. And I need you to let them know and express to them that you need to be able to get new contacts. And she says, well, dad, you know, it's that we're here. We're, we're away, away from the town. You know, it, it's just, but I said, this is important. It's your vision. You can't see well. She didn't want that conflict on her end. But I said, we need to figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to call you back. Have that conversation. Whatever you need to spend, go ahead and spend it. Whatever you need to do to get this, go ahead and do it. But I want to make sure that you express this to your team lead. And I said, all right, Bev, so what do you hear me say? No, I'm going to figure out a solution, Dad. Okay, I'll call you right back. So I get back to my workout. Five minutes later, she calls me. She's like, all right, so we can't go as a group, but we're finding a local member here to go out and go to the optometrist and get my prescription. I should have it this afternoon. I said, all right, good. That's being resilient, right? I just showed her how to bounce back from an, a problem, right? Because think about this. It's, it's to inconvenience an entire group, right? You, uh, m many people would just stay silent. Ah, it's okay, I'll, I'll just wear one contact, <laughs> right? And suffer from migraines and headaches. But I'm teaching because I'm aware. I think before I would have just sat in that place and even blamed her more and made her feel bad. Hey, now this is going to cost more money. Hey, this, now you're inconveniencing the other group. These thoughts were here. I'm not going to say I'm not free from those thoughts. I'm not free from the negativity when, deal, when, when things fall apart. I'm not. It hurts. It, I, I feel the, the, the burdens of it, the frustrations of the failure. I feel the anxiety of it. But resiliency is your bounce back. You got to be able to stop those thoughts, the negativity. You got to change your attitude towards it. And that's exactly what I did because I, I could have made it very, very uncomfortable for her. She's over there being able to experience, uh, you know, a, a mission trip that most of us will never get to experience. I, I, I don't think I even knew what Costa Rica was when I was growing up, <laughs> Right. I mean, Disneyland, I, I was able to visit her for the first time when I was like 15 years old. So it's our bounce back and our resiliency in relationships, our resiliency as leaders, as business owners. You're going to be faced with your fair share of hardships. We have to understand and embrace that. No one that has succeeded at a high level, none of our top producers did that without being resilient to the core. The next time you run into these guys, like, compliment them, right? Because it took a lot to overcome these neg negative thoughts, to overcome are, are things going to fall apart, right? Because that's the first thing. It's like when a deal falls through, I remember thinking this, it's like, am I, am I ever going to get another deal? And some of you may be in that place right now as you're facing hardship after hardship after hardship. And I've seen our very own agents, in my mind, make mistakes and take and, and allow these, you know, hardships to overwhelm their thoughts and, and, and completely steal their certainty and their confidence. I've seen it and, and I'm like, bounce back, bounce back. You can't sit in this place. Now you're nitpicking every situation. That's not even negative. Bounce back. Have appreciation for the moves you did make, how much you did grow. Your communication is better. You're overcoming your fears of public speaking, of being on video, of marketing, of following up, of making phone calls, of texting. Have some appreciation. 
But when we're not resilient, we're unable to bounce back. It's a flat ball. It just sticks to the ground. And you want someone to get you unstuck. Right? And I've seen that. I, I've seen some of our very own agents make, they make the mistakes of like, I, I can't do it anymore. I, I, need, I need someone to save me. I need someone to, to get, give me a bone. Give me a bone. They lost their dog in them, right? And they just want the bone. So they think that's an easier path. And, and may appear like it's a step forward. Oh, I'm going to get this from this person. I'm going to get that from that person. But little do they realize they just killed years of progression for their own business. Because what they failed to learn in that hardship is going to come full circle. And this time it's going to come with a lot of momentum. And it's going to completely squash them the next time around. Because the same lessons are not given to you through the same situations. It comes back with the vengeance. It's momentum. It's the snowball effect. It's bigger with more velocity. And that's what we have to think about there. And, and I just sit back. I can't be in a place and, and tell them, you're making the biggest mistake. I want to say that. <laughs> After all of this, you're really going to just go this other route. Yes, you face your, fair, your, your a few you know, hardships, a few challenges. But what did you learn from that? But when you don't have resiliency, you give in to that. I'm saying bounce back. Bounce back. And I can say this with full integrity. I could look you dead in the eyes and you know that that advice is from the core of my consistency. Bounce back. And gain that respect. Not only from those around you, but from yourself. You have to be resilient. Come up with a solution and stop that negativity. And the more you do that, it... it it continues to, to draw you into the life you do want, but there's a price to pay. You see, I feel this pressure because I'm not trying to just pay my bills. I, I get it. I've been in that situation. And I got to tell you, I think I had more stress <laughs> when I had such a low standard. And maybe that's the case. And that's what I want you to think about. Maybe you're under all this duress and stress. Because all you're thinking about is just covering your bills. What if you were to see something much bigger? Of where you can actually take your business. Where you can actually create financially for yourself. But if you're just barely trying to do something, you're in scarcity mode. And there's a lot of stress there. And even though I'm feeling this pressure, I'd rather be this in this pressure of growth and expansion and see how far I can take this versus the pressure of hopefully I can cover my bills. Do I need to cut off my cable bill? Do I need to be in this place where I'm in, I just in, in, a, in a place of scarcity where I have to cut things off versus build things up? We're all resilient. Now it's a matter of how fast you can bounce back. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. Isaiah, thank you for that. It's almost as if no other compliment matters. It's true, man. From those that are close to you, right? It's like we always yearn for that. And, it, and it's, it feels differently because they know our highs and lows. And, and that's the thing that I respect most. She, she, she's seen me, uh, you know, there day after day after the many challenges. And guys, you're going to face them. I, I, it's, it's shameful to even think how many times I felt like shutting this place down. But I'm so glad that I had some conditioning to make me resilient. And, and although it took me a little bit of bounce back, you know, I, I've just learned to hone, hone in. On, on building that capacity. So it's almost like a, a 30 second bounce back, right? If, if not less than that, just like I did with my daughter, but it's every situation is how you respond. Guys, I wanna thank you for joining me for another episode of Mindset Mastery. Have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye now. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Badass Agents Podcast. 
brought to you by AZ and Associates and Do The Work Coaching and Consulting. You can watch this and other episodes by subscribing to our channel on YouTube or by visiting us directly at badassagents.com. And of course, you can listen to this episode and many others on your preferred podcast provider.